Welcome to Statless Jam episode number two. Today, we are going to be tackling a hot topic, which is how to plan and track daily contribution margin. We've heard this from Cody Plofker. We've heard this from Sean Frank. You've been hearing it from us for months about how the most important thing you can do as a marketing organization is to track and plan your daily contribution margin. Well, let's start by defining the term. What the heck is it? Why does it matter? Contribution margin is simply your net revenue minus all of your variable expenses. Okay. It's distinct from gross margin in that it includes things that aren't normally seen above the line, like payment processor fees or fulfillment expenses beyond freight. Right. Now I understand that some of you may include all of that in the gross margin. And there's often not much distinction between gross profit and gross margin, with the exception of it also contribution margin is also going to include your ad spend. So it's every dollar that exists after all of your variable expenses, inclusive of ad spend, have been extracted from your revenue. And it's really important because those are the dollars that ultimately flow through to cover your fixed expenses. Now, the reason you don't include fixed expenses in the consideration of a contribution margin is because if you try to apply a fixed percentage against a changing amount of revenue, you will either over or underestimate the actual expectation of that number and miss the fact that you can actually reduce fixed expenses in the percentage of revenue by scaling up. And we want to be able to determine every time we're generating an incremental single dollar of contribution to ultimately flow through and cover uh, our OPEX because very simply contribution margin minus OPEX equals profit. And so as long as the contribution margin number that we forecast exceeds the operating expenses of our business, we are going to be a profitable e-commerce brand. So if your marketing team and your growth team can turn in a contribution dollar amount in excess of your OPEX, you will make profit. And so that is what, in a number that they can have immense control over, they can track every day and they can impact on a dollar basis, not just a percentage basis, a pure dollar basis every single day. But the challenge is getting to the number is hard, both planning for it and actually tracking it are challenging. So I'm going to show you how we use Statlist and our system to do both. So let's talk about tracking contribution margin. What we need to get visibility to in order to get to a daily contribution margin expectation is we need to be able to see our entire revenue minus all of the variable expenses on each and every day. Now, this is a challenging exercise, but let's break it down in terms of what this looks like. We're looking inside of Bamboo Earth, my skincare brand. You can see gross sales minus discounts equals order revenue before taxes. Now, we have the ability inside of Statlist to be able to change the revenue definition that you use. So this is another thing. Not everybody calls revenue the same thing. There's, let's see here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different versions of revenue that brands can track. So all of this depends on what you're saving. What Dave and the team look at is order revenue before taxes. So because taxes are a pass through, they're a zero expense, he doesn't want them to show up in revenue or expenses, no problem. The net result is going to be the same. But once you select your revenue definition, you're now going to go in and you're going to be able to see how, excuse me, on a daily basis, gross sales minus discounts equals order revenue before taxes. There are no taxes to take out because we're not including them in this reporting. We are going to take out the refunds or returns. We're going to take out COGS, which in our case refers specifically to product expenses. Uh, now, some people will include their freight in COGS, but in this case, we're just talking about product expenses. That gets me to product margin. Product margin, in this case, minus pick pack fee, minus what we call shipping plus. We'll talk about that in a second. Minus ad spend equals contribution margin. So we're just simply subtracting from left to right to get to a daily contribution margin outcome. Now, most of these metrics, the gross sales, the discounts, the order revenue, the refunds, the taxes, all can be automated easily out of an integration with Shopify. But the, when you start getting to the expense side is where it becomes challenging. So let's start first with product costs. Product costs can come directly out of your API integration with Shopify. And as a brand, I would encourage you that every time you build a new product in your e-commerce store, that when you fill out the MSRP, you also include a cost at the variant level. This will include this will help every data vendor that you integrate with. And it's a great data hygiene practice to ensure that every time we build a product, we build an associated cost and we update them every time it changes. If you do that, then we will have product costs in real time and be able to provide you visibility into the product expense with in tremendous daily accuracy. What's much more challenging are the expenses that don't exist on an automated or API basis. In particular, that relates to shipping and fulfillment. 
Most e-commerce brands are working either with a 3PL that's providing them a monthly invoice for their shipping expenses, and it's being reconciled monthly. It doesn't even exist anywhere on an automated daily basis, or they have their own fulfillment. And now you're talking about labor and warehouse and uh, equipment that all have to be amortized and get paid out on various cycles. Either way, in almost every case, there is no way to get a real-time view of your shipping expense. And so almost every brand and what we're allowing for then is an estimated percentage of sales each month that gets reconciled. It's really important to understand that this process as a marketing team, getting to daily contribution margin is not about being every dollar specifically accurate. It is be about being as close as possible to reality. This is marketing. This is not accounting. We're not attempting to replace your accounting department. We're attempting to create visibility for your marketing team to understand where they are at relative to those expectations. So we will look at the percentage of variable expense associated with shipping. And we can do this on a percentage of sales basis. We could do this on a per order basis. Or if we need to, we can include a monthly fixed expense. Some brands insist on including things like agency fees or creative production expenses in there as well. And so we can add any of these into our calculation. And as we add these descriptions and columns, you'll go back and you'll see that in the report, they show up here and are subtracted out on a daily basis. So now we've created the system to account for the revenue and expenses every single day to get to a level of contribution margin that we can track. But that to me is still insufficient. Many of you can do that inside of a spreadsheet, but really the key is, and this is the, at the heartbeat of what we're building in Statless and what we believe about operating a growth organization is that data only matters in context to expectation. You need to be able to understand what you needed contribution margin to be that day and whether you're ahead or behind of expectation and how quickly you can identify it when you are off course and course correct determines your ability to effectively and continually produce predictable, profitable growth. So this is where the magic of our integration with our system really plays out is that we can start with building a model to determine the right budget to maximize contribution. So all the way down to the budget planning, we're thinking about maximizing contribution margin to set a budget for each day. We combine that new customer expectation of spend and efficiency with a cohort specific LTV predictive model that gives us returning customer revenue to give us a forecast all the way down to the PL level of revenue spend contribution margin for the month. So you can see here's my January expectation with my budget all the way plan to contribution margin. But still, we can't simply just take this number. Some of you may even be getting to this level where you're having a forecasted expectation of contribution margin, but you cannot now just take this number and divide it by 30 and create the same expectation every day. Why? Because that's not how revenue flows. It doesn't flow evenly. And if you do that, you're going to be, deceive yourself to thinking you're ahead or behind the rest of where you should actually be. Let me give you an example. In the case of Bamboo Earth, what we've built is some tools to help us think about the way that their revenue paces as a business. And there's two different ways that we can look at this. So this is our modeling section of Statlet that helps us to set the daily expectations. So you can see we have, I just sort of glanced over this, but inside of the target section here, we have all of those monthly expectations that are created by our forecasting tool automatically synced. This spreadsheet and Statlet sync automatically. You can see resync sheets that data gets pulled in here so that we have our forecast available in real time, not just at the monthly level, but we can go in and set it at the daily level. And we can model this daily expectation in a bunch of different ways. We can use a year over year effect. So this is where a lot of brands will do where you'll say, okay, how much revenue did I do on a percentage basis each day, right? So this shows you last year, if I were to use that model, it holds constant the financial expectation I have and applies the daily percentages that happened in the last year. If you're running the same marketing calendar, that can be a really effective way to do it. Another way that we really recommend is using a day of the week effect. So this shows you the last year, Bamboo Earth's revenue percentages by day, weighted averages. And you can see that Saturday and Sunday produce 20 to 40%, 20 to 30% more revenue on average than the other day of the week. And if you compare Thursday to Sunday, you're talking about a 50% delta in revenue expectation on average for those days of the week. It's really important in this case that we use the day of the week, day of the week effect anytime we're thinking about bamboo earth. So applying these models, and I can combine them, I can say, give me some year, uh, year over year effect, some day of the week effect. I can look at this up for my store. I can look at this for the industry. I can use lots of different tools to think about that. I can think about growing daily throughout the month. If I wanted to apply a monthly growth factor, there's all sorts of ways that I can get to this number, copy it out of here, 
<laughs> excuse me, into this daily tracking tab here that we call the MER tab to get to a daily revenue expectation. Now, once I use those generalized modeled effects, the next thing I have a consideration for is the marketing calendar. Because in the event that I am running different initiatives, products, or promotions this year that I was last year, I need to account for that as well. So as an example, Bamboo Earth opened the year with a four-day promotion that we knew Jan the first day of the year was going to be the biggest because we had a New Year sales last chance email going out, right? Last day of a sale that was coming with us. We knew this was going to be a bigger day of both spend and revenue. So then we can go into our daily expectations and increase both the spend, and this is just a manual adjustment relative to expectation. We can plus up any day that we want across spend in any of these channels from spend, revenue, et cetera. And again, all those numbers get automatically synced right back into here. So you can see my saved model here is exactly what I anticipated and what is synced into um, this expectation. Now, what that allows me to do is now all of my reports are synced for over 35 metrics, including contribution margin to every day of my plan. So I can see with immense clarity whether where I am ahead or behind of the expectation that I've set so that I can action against it. And then the beautiful part is every single morning, this report gets dropped as an email in your inbox that looks Boom, you can see it first thing in the morning, it gets dropped in every day at 7 a.m. You walk in and you can see exactly where you're at month to day to expectation across all of these critical insights. And then that triggers our team to jump in and start actioning, right? And the way that we teach it is that you walk down the line of the report. You're looking for areas where you are ahead or behind of expectation, and you then begin to develop actions and solutions to it, and you can dive deeper to answer questions, right? So as an example, one of the things I like to say is there's only ever two kinds of problems. There's either a volume problem or an efficiency problem. In this case, I've got less revenue at as much ad spend as I wanted. I've got an efficiency problem, right? Not enough revenue at too much ad spend. So an efficiency problem. You can see that showing up in MER. And you can see that I've also got this little highlight here that my AOV is a lot lower than expected. Hmm. I might jump in and go in and look at, dive deeper on this to look at an AOV histogram report, which this shows me my expectation of my mean median and modal order value for this period of time. I can look at this for only new customers. And you'll notice that my average order value for returning customers is actually where I'm substantially behind. And the modal order is $40. So I, I now again, I'm not running baby worth day to day, but if I was and Dave is, uh, you could think about, all right, what am I selling to my existing customers? That's different than the expectation that I created at the beginning of the month. What offer? drove this AOV down lower where I'm ahead on orders, but below on value. Additionally, I see that my efficiency of new customer acquisition is behind. And in particular, as I scroll down further, I see that Facebook is the channel that's lagging specifically. So I can dive in deeper to look at one of these reports by jumping into my Facebook overview report, where now I can see each campaign where, where I'm at to performance to expectation and go into actioning and making adjustments. So the report is a gateway to the, the, to the next set of questions that I need to ask the second I discover the solution and I go action against it. So from this, I can walk away going, okay, there's two things I need to go investigate as a growth marketer. Why is my returning customer AOV so low? What offer is going on that's that behind? And why is Meta struggling? And what actions can I take to get this efficiency back on track, right? Another question might be, is there any more incremental Google volume? Because I'm way ahead of expectation here, but behind on spend. So I've got the next set of things to go do, to go action, to drive towards the target, to accomplish the contribution margin goal that I want. Additionally, if I find that I'm pacing behind on my contribution margin, guess what other action I can take? I can take action on the cost side of the business. There may have to be a consideration for some spend that I had planned to not occur, or I might have to go to a vendor and start thinking about cash flow, where what payments could I push out knowing that I'm lagging behind on this metric? So knowing right away, that, hey, how quickly can I see the problem? Gives me the visibility to go take action. And this is why it's so critically critical that not only you develop the capacity and tooling to track contribution margin, but you plan it with clarity of expectation. This is the system that enables you to solve problems, to accomplish what is ultimately the ability to um, execute against the forecast. That is what the key is. Forecasts become more accurate when you execute against them and when you can see very quickly when you are off track. And that's the, what the entirety of the Atlas system is. But it begins with, well, the industry has adopted collectively, all of us understand the power of tracking contribution margin and moving revenue down in your mind and contribution margin up into the priority position that it belongs in. So 
this is the system. There's lots of ways that you can take and build versions of this for yourself or that we could build for you. But hope you enjoyed this. We continue to bring more statless reports every week. And thanks for uh, hanging out for listening to 15 minutes.